Okay, today we're going to talk about how to do crown molding using a simple common tool, a miter box like this. I don't have a power saw, so I'm going to make it easy, show you how to just use a real inexpensive miter box. It comes down to two things. There's two types of corners. You got an inside corner, okay, that's a corner for the inside, and over here, you got an outside corner. So, depending upon your cut, depending upon your corner is how the cuts are going to look. So, here's how an outside corner works. It is on an outside corner, okay, what you got is the top piece is taller than the bottom piece. You got to get that right. So that's the first thing you got to get right. The second thing you got to get right is you got to make sure that you cut it like that rather than like this. So here's how you do it. Here's how you remember. If you got a daughter, don't let your daughter go outside, outside corner in a high skirt. The top is high. You don't want your daughter going out in a high skirt. So here's how we do that piece. Let's go back to your miter box. Get one of these. I'm going to show you why you need this. Get your pencil. Go back over. You get your crown molding. You got to get it right because it's going to have two different things. So you go up, put it the way you want it. So it's going to 45. 45, the top's high. You go like that. You draw it. You draw, 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 draw. You got that. Now here's the trick. Go to the top, okay, what you want with the top is you want it to point out, so you're going to mark the top here, like this, okay, because you want it pointy there and cutting that, but this what is, is essential, is you take this, see how I mark the top here, when you go to your box, you're going to end up cutting this part that's unmarked and you're going to get confused, so you take this, Rather than flipping it around and making your mark and making it wrong, you take this, you know it's going like that, you follow it down, go like this, so you know it's that direction, and you mark it there. Okay? So now we go to the box. Here's the box right here. Now let's line this baby. So the box just happens to be sitting this way. Alright? So that looks good. So you got the 45 there. Got to check two things. 45 works there. Yep, that's my 45 that I'm looking for. But does it match that? See, this one doesn't match. So then you go over here and try this one. So here's my 45 there. Okay, matches this line going across here. Okay, you get that, line it up there, matches, and then you see that line there? Does that match? No, it doesn't. So here's the key. You going to take that, flip it around. Now you did your little flipper. Now you take it here. Does that match? That matches. Okay. Does that match there? Yes. Looks good. So most likely probability is what's going to be the hardest thing to hold. You put it in there, you go like that, put this in at a 45, put in your peg, get your peg in, line this up, make sure you get enough room, and then right there,
Okay, take it out of the box. Remember, tall on the top. You got this right. Go up there. Get your 45 going. Look at that. Fits in there perfect. So that's how you get it right, using simple tools. And what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to use this piece to uh, make another piece to measure where I can just go straight straight. But to get the seam right, to make it seamless, I'm going to use this. I'm making templates on each one so I get each cut right. Because each piece of this wood costs six bucks, so the last thing you want to do is go making six dollar mistakes all day. So I took one and I'm making little templates. And then when I go to make my final cut, I'm going to take this, put it uh, on here like that. Then I know that i got to cut this one like this and get them all right. So I went around the whole room and made ones, just took one piece, cut it up into little squares, get them all right. Then after that, I'm going to tape them up, measure them, and be all set. So